Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths Part 2. This is a new film from 2024, rated PG-13 with a runtime of an hour and 33 minutes. As of the recording of this video, we have a Rotten Tomato score of 20% from the critics, Letterbox average uh, audience score, sorry, audience score of 33%, and then a Letterbox average rating of 2.4%. Now, if you're not caught up with these films, this is a part two of a three-part series uh, where DC is adapting their Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline. Uh, let me give you a quick synopsis. We'll go into some of the voice cast and get into it. Uh, the Anti-Monitor, the Monitor's evil counterpart, is released into the DC multiverse and begins to destroy the different Earths that compose it. The Monitor attempts to recruit heroes from across multiverse to fight back. As an endless army of shadow demons bent on destruction of all reality swarms all over the world and all parallel Earths, the only thing opposing them is the mightiest team of metahumans ever assembled. But not even the combined power of Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and all their fellow superheroes can slow down the onslaught of the Invincible Horde. What mysterious force is driving them and how long do the long-buried secrets of the Monitor and Supergirl Threatened to crush our last defense. Film stars Jensen Ackles as the voice of Batman. Darren Chris as Superman. Meg Donnelly as the voice of Supergirl. Stana Ketik as the voice of Wonder Woman. We also have Jonathan Adams voicing the Monitor. Jeffrey Aaron as the Psycho Pirate. We have plenty of other individuals, but that really comprises the main characters of the cast. Uh, so let's get into it. Um... As you could tell from the Rotten Tomato score, the Letterbox score, uh, and just overall how long it took me to put out this review, this film is not very good. Um, I don't think it's even as good as the first film. And I didn't, like, the first film I thought it was just okay. I didn't even think it was uh, too much. So um, it's, it's a bit of a disappointment, unfortunately. I'm a big fan of the comic books. Uh, but this story is very convoluted in the comic books it's definitely something that dc was trying to do at the time to try to kind of streamline their universe um and even though we are putting this in a three different parts i still feel like there's not a lot of direction it just doesn't feel they're missing the key elements i think of what made that original story um you know interesting uh so that that kind of sucks uh, we'll go into some of the stuff, but like some of the big things is the animation feels very stiff. Like there's a very, there's much, there's, there's just a lack of dynamic movements. There's a lack of like anything you, you're, you're working with the multiverse here and there's just a lack of things looking different. Uh, there's a lack of sound depth to me. Like the, it just feels very, the score is not it doesn't really add much to any scenes. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just feels very off in a lot of places. Um, you know, this film picks up directly after the events of part one, continuing the story of the monitor trying to save the multiverse. So that's definitely, they're sticking to the comics here. Um, while part one had a little bit more action, a little bit more emotional depth, this one just kind of struggles to keep any momentum with some of that. Any, all that, all that, build up and that emotional resonance the resonance that we were um coming in from the first film uh it just feels scattered lower stakes there's very little character development um there is there is one storyline that i kind of this is kind of split up into three different parts that converge at the end of the film but there's one part that I, i'll talk about in a second um the film centers one storyline about around supergirl and her relationship with the monitor uh, I think there's some really interesting ideas about a maybe kind of like a father daughter dynamic that, you know, he's found her. There's conflict. Uh, she wants to be her own person and she wants to remember where she comes from. Uh, but it just doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, there's some nice Easter eggs with like tying in some other uh, of the recent films. So that was kind of cool. Um, there are some other arcs with like, the Earth 3 Batman interacting with the multiverse family and him kind of continue this this Batman continues to just kind of keep wanting to work alone. Uh, but at the end, the 
fi- the family finally comes through. It just felt, it just did. It didn't feel like it. It was a uh, organic. It just felt like, oh, this is exactly where we're going, right? Um, and I will say the one part that I did the storyline that I was hooked on was uh, the psycho pirate. Everything explaining the psycho pirate's origin, how he came from his origins all the way to being in the ship uh, at the at the end of the last film. Um, it's all ve- done very interestingly. Um, there's a, there's a very interesting storytelling device where it's a psycho pirate talking to an individual who we're not supposed to know who they are uh, until later on and that is revealed. So I think all that was cool. The psycho pirate is a, a very, um, it's also, it's a very weird character that I think has, a, they, they really utilize his backstory in a very interesting way. So that was, that was one of the things I actually enjoyed about this film. Uh, but despite all the potential that I think this film had, it just lacked a lot of conviction in some of the decisions. I feel like when you adapt something from the comics, you don't need to touch on everything, right? You you kind of want to bring the vibes is the best way I can describe it, that the comic brought to the readers then. And you want to integrate that, even if you have to change details around. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, this just wasn't it. It really, like, I know a lot of these things are cash grabby from these companies. But this one just really feels like a cash grab. Like, oh, we can break it up into three parts and sell it to people three different times. Uh, and then maybe even re-release it a fourth time as a collecting. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I would say you're probably better off trying to read the comics, which, once again, those are not perfect. They're very convoluted, very wordy. It was uh, it was just the style of the 80s. But uh, even then, like, I think it has a lot more emotional stakes some really epic panels. So I'll well, probably maybe go back and revisit that once part three is done. Hopefully they can recover and we have a, a, a nice emotional payoff at the end, like we did with the original crisis. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you thought about this film because I was definitely just unfortunately very underwhelmed. Uh, as always, thank you for watching everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live, that is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone.